So uh, our <laughs> last talk tonight uh, is going to be uh, Robots and Price of the Sea. Please give uh, Brittany Posnikoff a very warm welcome. Hi, everyone. So as was said, my name is Brittany, or Straith, and I'm really excited to talk with you about robots and privacy. So my motivation for this talk comes from my experiences both with robots in the wild and in controlled lab environments. With the robots in controlled lab environments, I was lucky with the uh, fact that I got hands-on experiences with the sensors that were used. I was able to see the data that the robots were able to take in, how it was used, how it was processed, and where we stored the information for the most part. With robots in the wild, that hasn't been the case. Most of the robots I've seen in airports or in service positions, I've had no idea what the make or model was, um, no idea which companies own the robot, because if they're in a public space, you don't necessarily know. Uh, and it's been so hard to figure out what sensors they have on them, how they use their data, or where that's stored. And so I wanted to give this talk to give you all sort of an idea of how privacy policies at least discuss um, how the robots deal with your data. So the first robots that I had the most experiences with are Pepper and Now. Now is a robot that is used a lot in research environments. Pepper is more used in, uh, well, sales positions, uh, informational positions. And you can see uh, Pepper is the taller one, Now is the shorter one. And like I said, they're salespeople, they're assistants, they're informational guides. You, you'll usually see them talking and not doing much else, but at least giving you a bit of information. Now doesn't have a lot of sensors. It's got a few that you might have concerns about, like cameras, because it can take video, it can see what you're doing. Same thing with microphones. It's got four of them uh, all over its head. Uh, the, the reason the uh, arrow here is pointing to the mouth is that's actually where the camera is on this robot. It isn't the eyes. The eyes are output, not input. So this is another thing that is typically an issue with people interacting with robots, is they don't know where the sensors are and what they're doing. So in this case, if you thought the eyes were the cameras, you'd be wrong. And the robots also have things like Wi-Fi connectivity, access points, they're collecting a lot of data from you from these sensors and other devices inside. Pepper has a lot more sensors on her. So she's got lasers, sonars, infrared, microphones, cameras, a 3D sensor that's outside of the cameras. Um, I suspect it's something like a Kinect, but it's been very hard for me to find information. Um, Pepper, now at least, uh, there is a, a URL at the bottom that you can look at that tells you what some of the sensors are and what they do. Um, but it's something that you really have to dive into to understand, and most people wouldn't understand without doing that bit of a tech dive into the robot. But for both of these robots, I found out that they have one single privacy policy that covers all the robots in the company and the website and everything else that the company does. And these robots are owned by SoftBank Robotics uh, and SoftBank in general. So, I mean, there are some questions I had, like, does this privacy policy cover all of their cell phones as well? Does it cover all of, like, every device they're doing? So this is a bit of a problem because the website versus the robots, obviously there's very different data collection capabilities, and I'd like to know what those are and have that parsed out, but it's not very clear. The only part that was specific to the robot, I think, <laughs> and maybe also part of the cell phones, um, is part of when a command is spoken, then it gets translated by a third-party recognition provider in order to prov provide the feature that was expected. So this, obviously, to work properly should be real time, not a week later, not hours later, not probably not minutes later. So it's interesting to know that information from the microphones is being sent directly to a third-party provider to be able to translate what the robot does. Um, and I worked with these robots for about four years, and I only figured this out when I read the privacy policy in the last couple weeks. So this is a concern. And I realized that I was okay with the robots, and I trusted them because there were senior researchers in the area uh, in the lab where I used these robots. And part of that was like, I didn't think about privacy policies until thinking about this talk. Other things with these robots is, are that when, it collect, when they collect in, uh, personal information from you, um, that's your problem. It's not the company's problem. It's not something the third party needs to consider. It's your problem, which is another thing. When you're interacting with robots, you need to think about this because it might not 
just be you directly interacting with them, but you might be walking by them as well. Somebody else might be using them, and they might be picking up this information from you. So I have concerns. <laughs> uh, the next robot is the GCWay S+. Plus. This thing is a vacuum, it's a security guard. I've personally used it as a selfie taker multiple times. Uh, it had a 1080p HD camera, it's got microphones, it has some sort of motion detection, but none of the documentation I could find on this robot through the website, through the manual that I have, because I actually own this robot, um, nothing actually says what the technical capabilities are. I actually had to go into it a couple times to see what it had, um, so that's kind of interesting. This thing also has a mobile application, which is another form of data collection that these robots might be transfer tr transferring information from the robot to the company that owns it. Um, and there's also cloud storage, like where it was taking selfies for me. <laughs> I quickly found out those uh, selfies ended up on a server in China that was completely unprotected. Uh, so that was kind of fun. But I could not pr find a privacy policy. There's nothing on their website. There was nothing in the manual. I even tried the app, and then I had renders help with this, but we actually found a copy of the app because it's no longer on the app store. We went through it, found mention of privacy policies, and I'm like, wait, look, there's blue text, which might be hard to see, but it says terms and privacy. Found out that is literally only text. There is no link. <laughs> there no, we even went through the APK and tried to rip it apart and see if there's a PDF embedded in the app nothing, no privacy policy, even though they tried to pretend they did have one. And this is a robot that probably should have had a privacy policy because they were sending my information in the clear every sing in every single packet looked like this. So it had my username, my password, my age, my gender, where I lived in every single packet. So, I mean, that's a problem. Uh, <laughs> and then the next thing with this robot is, this is an email I got, I think it was in 2018. I realized that this robot could only have two accounts registered to it at a time. I tried to register a third, it didn't work. So I contacted the company to see if they could get the accounts removed. Somebody removed them for me. They hadn't been working there for over half a year though. <laughs> so I have concerns. <laughs> Even if this company did have a privacy policy, I know how they were handling my information, which is to say, very badly. The next robot is the LG Chloe, or C-L-O-I, guidebot. I actually, I actually saw, Chloe? Chloe, okay. And I saw this robot in an airport in Incheon, and I loved it. Um, I'm pretty sure it irritated my partner, because I'm like, okay, you handle checking in, you handle the bags, I'm gonna yell robot and fall this robot for 20 minutes. And I loved it, I loved seeing people interact with it. It could scan your boarding passes and take you to wherever in the airport you wanted to go. You could choose if you wanted to go to a shop in the area and it would also guide you there. Um, it would take selfies for you, so you didn't have to convince it into doing it. Um, but then when it took a selfie, you would have to put your email address in so it could send you the selfie. And I have no idea what the sensors on this thing are. There's like, obviously there's a camera, there's probably a microphone because it could hear people talk to it. Um, there's a boarding pass scanner, like what else did this thing have? And the interesting thing with this robot is the only reason I found out what it was was because I looked online um, at, for news articles about air, robots in the Incheon airport. There was no markings on the robot that told me what it was. Uh, I had no idea if it was with the airport or with one of the airlines. And then through those articles, I also found out that this robot was made by LG and Hyundai. So there are actually two companies for one robot. I checked both websites. There are no privacy policies that I can find um, at all that discuss the robot in any form. And I mean, LG, uh, LG and Hyundai are both huge companies. Like their privacy policies are very vast, but nothing specific about the robot. Um, so I have concerns. What, like, what was happening with the email addresses? What was happening with the pictures? Where were things stored? Why wasn't it marked who owned the robot? Like, there's so many things. Then there's the next robot. You may remember this one from such hits as I Fell in a Fountain. <laughs> and the interesting thing about this robot is the company calls it a, an autonomous data machine. Like, already I think this thing is evil just by how they named it. 
And the thing is that they also tried to patent this IT idea of an autonomous data machine. It's, from what I've heard, a very bad patent, and pretty much every, everything can fall under it, so eh. But this is what they decided to name the robot. It's obviously collecting as much information about you as possible. And I found some sensors from this robot, but basically because there was a uh, document that was FOIA'd from Huntsville, uh, Huntsville Park in California, and that document was from the company and listed some of the sensors. So that's the only reason I know some of this is because of a FOIA document, not because it's on their website, not because of anything else. Awesome. Um, so it was really hard to find out any information about this robot. So I'm still cutting this as like, there might be a lot more we don't know. And so that concerns me is the whole point of this robot is for people detection, facial recognition, and it acts as a guard, it acts as basically an extended arm with a police force. It has a 360 degree HD video streaming. It's got automatic license plate recognition, which I think was 300 in a few minutes. Um, thermal anomaly detection, and the thing that scares me the mo most, which was automatic signal detection. This robot collects all of the MAC addresses of the devices nearby that try to connect to it or that it can try and connect to. And so this made me really uncomfortable because even if you're in the area, it's collecting things about you. And a single privacy policy exists to, that covers the website and the robots. Again, there was nothing specific for the robot. And when you read through it, almost nothing is said about the, what the robot's capabilities are, even though they market those, all those other things like the uh, automatic signal detection and facial recognition. There is nothing there that describes where that data stored, why, or anything else, except for this little bit that says they provide video surveillance systems, and so recordings might, in, might include uh, personally identifiable information. I argue that's the whole point of the, the service and the product and the device is that they're trying to collect as much personal information as possible. It's not a uh, may, it is a we are trying for this. And I think that it's important to remember that when you're dealing with this robot. Especially, this is very small and I'm sorry, uh, but they d may disclose the d surveillance videos and information to our clients. Not to you, not for the purposes of helping you, but to our clients. And considering these robots are basically, um, I call them narc bots because they just, <laughs> like, they talk about how these robots are hooked into the police systems and can automatically report people. Um, so when you think about the fact that those are some of their customers are police forces and these robots are, and their privacy policy says they may give that information to their clients and not you as our client, but our clients in general, that makes me super uncomfortable. Especially when I contacted their customer service and asked about if I'm a third party, like what is my recourse? Like this doesn't cover people who just happen to interact with the robot. Um, and they said, you have our entire policy. Like there was nothing for people who just happen to be in the area. Like if you just happen to walk by one of these robots, which I know some of my friends have been because they've sent me pictures, <laughs> um, it's automatically collecting your information. And so it's important to think about how you approach that. And it's really hard to convince me that this robot isn't evil when they specifically chose a share amount. <laughs> so again, I have concerns. I felt like reading things about this robot, I have, you don't have privacy around it. And how many minutes do I have left? Um, so I'm going to run through a few more because I still have time left, which I'm super excited about. Um, I have this one, super cute, only has touch, but no privacy policy exists. But I think it's fine because there are no sensors. So I don't have concerns. And this is the same for Paro, which is, again, another like soft robot. Basically, my idea for privacy in robots is go for the soft, fluffy ones. They seem to be okay right now. <laughs> so again. I don't have concerns because that one is only touch. Ollie, though, um, this robot has a single privacy policy exists that covers the company and the websites, uh, uh, company website and robots, but it also had additional privacy policies that covered each one of the ro uh, apps for every robot they made, which includes the popular BB-8 robot, if many of you have seen those. But this is probably the absolute best privacy policy I saw because they had an easy to read version and a 
uh, like legal, difficult, much longer version. But the two versions were great. The fact that they broke it down by app, so you could see what everything does. They listed every single one of their partners that might even touch your information. Like, they even listed their password manager. And I'm like, oh, that's actually great. I'm super happy to see that they went through that. So I have fewer concerns, but this thing still does collect a lot of information. They had a lot about marketing. They had a lot about who they sell your information to and why. So there's still places your information could go, but at least they were descriptive. Ibo is probably the worst, actually, actually the worst, but they did have a specific privacy policy just for that robot. But they do say things like um, that mobile providers might provide your location. So if you are using an app to control this robot, which is what you're supposed to do, that they automatically record and give your uh, location uh, back to Ibo, uh, the company, and they use it, but they consider it to be non-personal information. So that's kind of interesting. I have a question. <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> Um, the other thing, too, is they talk about data aggregation and how uh, they don't consider demographic information to be per personal information. They say demographic information is non-personal. So that's also, if you read the privacy policy in depth, is something that they're willing to sell to uh, a bunch of their clients is all your demographics. So again, I have concerns. So what I learned throughout, you know, looking through all the privacy policies, policies with these robots is that a lot of them don't have privacy policies and you have no recourse for your data. Most of these privacy policies are only focused on the people that own or lease the robots, not for any of you who might just happen to be in the area, happen to get your photo taken by a robot, happen to get your audio collected. You have no recourse besides maybe going to the company that's leasing it and good luck, uh, especially if it's something like the Nightscope robot. Um, and I think that's my time. So thank you very much, everyone. And if you have questions, I have so many more robots to discuss. Um, but I'll be here all weekend. Thanks.